Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video we're going to be talking about AMP, the, specifically the AMP plugin, but I have another video for the AMP for WP plugin, which are two separate plugins that do very different things, and we're going to talk about AMP in general. For those of you who are unaware of what AMP is, or maybe you just briefly looked it up, AMP is a framework that was developed by Google and is now an open source project that has its own markup language called AMP HTML. Think of it as like just standard HTML, but with a lot of restrictions to what you're allowed to do. So for instance, JavaScript is out. All the JavaScript for AMP has been customly written and developed by the AMP project for AMP. And the reason for that is, is JavaScript in particular is very expensive for mobile users to use. And if you have a lot of it, you can severely really hurt their mobile, your mobile performance. Now, some of you at will probably be wondering, well, Scott, why don't you use AMP on your website? And we're going to get into that, actually. But primarily, it's because I get better performance without using the AMP plugin, actually, which sounds a bit of a oxymoron. AMP is supposed to be the bastard mobile performance, and it can be for most websites because most websites are built in a very inefficient and bloated manner. And AMP is basically a way to handicap what you're able to do. So you probably went ahead and you tried to install this AMP plugin, the AMP WordPress plugin developed by Google Automatic X, insert a bunch of names here, and it's a great plugin in principle. Here's what you get. You install it and you get these settings. You get the general, which is reader. Reader is the classic mode. Basically what reader does is you go to your website and um, you find your URL and you put the query string AMP at the at back of it and it's gonna generate the most generic looking post ever. The thought process here though is it's so basic, it's so easy to implement that it'll work with anything out of the box. And it does. It will not cause any issues. This will validate in the AMP validator. And if you're curious, um, there's an AMP validator. You can actually just run the test directly in Google. Um, what you do is you just click run test, and it'll go ahead and fetch the page and check for any AMP validation issues, and this will work. Um, the downside with reader mode, though, is it's very ugly. Oh, it, this invalidates because this is a testing site and has no index, but everything else does validate, so you can ignore that. That's my own fault. So it, it is a valid AMP page, though, because it's only marked as no index. So this is a valid AMP page, and the AMP HTML is correct, but it's super slimmed down, and it's not appealing. You then have transitional mode. Transitional mode, as it mentions here, will activate, uh, it'll use the site's template files and it will try to generate a non-AMP URL, so your standard desktop URL, and an AMP URL, just like what we saw with the query string AMP at the end of it. This is a good mode for most websites. What this will do is it will go through all of your pages and try to create a valid AMP format of them. And then it'll also leave the regular URLs for your desktop users. Standard mode is AMP all the time. Um, this means that all of your URLs will be AMP URLs. Your entire site will be AMP all the time. That one it does require a lot of development work because things like menus will break. Even if you're on Genesis and you're using common theme from Genesis, the menu relies on JavaScript. So you have to then develop a nice menu within the AMP framework that looks good. And this plugin does not make it easy to do that. In comparison to the AMP for WP plugin, which we'll talk about in the next video, um, this plugin is very developer oriented and it's supposed to just give you a good gist. So you, we're gonna set it in transitional mode and we're just gonna talk about it. So right here, um, you, you could choose to serve all templates or you could just choose to serve a select number of templates in transitional mode. This can be beneficial to you because you can then go ahead and know, okay, well, my pages, like your homepage, for instance, are probably never going to be AMP validate, never in a million years. And that's pretty common um, because things like your carousel and your sliders and um, any complex layout that's JavaScript oriented, your sticky floating thingy, not gonna validate. Um, so your posts though, your posts tend to be very slimmed down. So you could probably go ahead and only enable it on your post and be fine. And maybe your products. So we're going to go ahead and leave it for all templates, but just, I just wanted to make you aware that you could choose what templates and what post types were supported. 
So we're gonna leave it for all templates for the sake of this video. So you enable it and then you have these new bars. You get validated URLs and error index. And when, see, when people see the error index, they get quite scared. Um, it's not a major issue actually. Every page is now going to have an error. So don't get too worried. When you go to the validated URLs, as it'll mention here, it says in markup status, invalid markup removed, and the invalid markup was script, and it tells you the sources that it originated from, which is the WooCommerce plugin and storefront, and it tells you your CSS usage at 43%. Basically, all that means is the AMP plugin does a C, it basically shakes your CSS to try and find code that is not needed. And this is an actual AMP page right here. And you could tell by just checking and it says AMP HTML, AMP runtime. And it took the, all the CSS and inlined it and it actually looks really good. It acts like a normal website more or less, which is a great thing to see. Um, the downside of course is we're gonna lose functionality. JavaScript that was on the page as it mentions here is just straight up removed. And that's problematic. You can then go to your error index though, and you can see what was specifically removed. So as you can see here, it tells me, okay, uh, all these JavaScript files for WooCommerce were effectively removed, including jQuery JS, because those cannot be used in the AMP framework. You then have an in invalid inline script. And if you want to click the details of these, you just click it right here, and it'll tell you effectively what that script was and where it originated from. So the text content of this script was for WooCommerce and it was in the body and it had an invalid markup. So you could choose to removing all invalid markup which occur will allow it to be served as AMP. Keeping a valid markup means that the URL on which it occurs will redirect to the non-AMP version. So this allows you to customize just a little bit on what URLs are specifically served from AMP. I could choose to, and the default behavior is to just remove the JavaScript files or I could choose to click the keep button, which means that URL will never be served from AMP and the AMP version will redirect to the non-AMP version. This allows the page to effectively act like it always has. Now, the problem with it removing all JavaScript is um, things just don't work. Um, this shopping cart, for instance, let's say you had a on hover, it showed you your products. It's not going to be able to show you that anymore because WooCommerce, at least out of the box, doesn't have an AMP version that's ready and can just drop in the scripts. And that's where you run into the primary issue with AMP using the AMP plugin for WordPress and its adoption. Most themes that you find on ThemeForest don't have an AMP version. A couple of the news themes do, uh, JNews, Soledad, and I think Newspaper all do. And I've actually used the Soledad AMP version fairly recently for a client that wanted to have AMP set up. However, most themes just aren't ready for AMP. And that's because you have to do a lot of checks specifically for AMP. And then you have to rework your plugin to work specifically for AMP. And most users don't care. Um, the fact of the reality, the fact of the matter is most websites trying to use AMP aren't going to see a lot of inherent value from it. AMP is still primarily for publishers. So blogs, news, I could set this up on certmedia.com for instance for my blog post and that would probably be fine. I can't do it from my whole website. Uh, I have one issue that I have to fix and it, it's related to my menu on mobile devices. And there's another issue actually too with images if I wanna go full AMP all the time. Uh, so my menu, which is you click on it and it basically just shows you, I'll show you real quick actually. You click it and it is um, on mobile. So you have the text up here for desktop, which is ideal. But on mobile, it's converted to a menu button like this via JavaScript. Well, because that JavaScript can't be used in an AMP environment, I then need to rework the menu specifically for AMP. And when I did cross compare the performance in Lighthouse on my AMP version versus my non-AMP version, I was actually faster in on the non-AMP version on the multiple tests I ran with Lighthouse which kind of leads me to the other issue. If your website's already fast, AMP's only value is to get you into that latest news carousel on Google search, which is right now restricted to AMP only publishers. Now, they are working on it to be accessible for non-AMP publishers on mobile devices, but that's not coming, I believe, until 2021. So in between now and then, 
you're kind of stuck on getting into that feed without being amp ready. And getting amp ready can be quite a headache, especially because the amp plugin that's backed by automatic and everybody else under the sun is not a very good plugin in getting you there. It, it just quite isn't. It will validate your pages by stripping out everything that made them unique. Um, which is kind of the point of AMP because it strips out all that JavaScript that wasn't necessary, but it doesn't make it easy. You can add your Google Analytics, no problem. If you go to Appearance Customize too, you should be able to, at least under if you have the transitional mode enabled, you'll be able to modify some aspects of it. But really, the AMP plugin that's developed by Automatic and Google right now is just not a very good approach for most websites because fundamentally, you're either gonna have to rework most of your site to get it to work on AMP, which is a good thing. AMP is probably faster than the site you have right now. And I'm not saying, hey, don't bother with AMP. AMP is a very good thing, especially if your website's bloated on mobile devices. But if you don't have the resources to resolve it and you're a store, for instance, an e-commerce site, this is not the plugin that I would really advise you to use because you're just going to have tons of issues until you get it set up. On fairly simple Genesis websites, it's easy to integrate. I've done it a few times now. But on more complicated sites, you're gonna have to put in some dev hours and you're gonna have to fix some validation issues because while you will have valid AMP pages for mobile devices, those pages in themselves are gonna be a very watered down experience. In the next video, I'm gonna show you another plugin that is supposed to help you get AMP validated and it makes it a lot easier to get at least stylish pages for mobile devices. And I'm gonna show you this plugin because there's a lot more settings in it. But for now, this plugin is good if your theme supports it. Your theme has to specifically declare support. And most of the plugins that you probably rely on are not going to support it. And if you wanna get that nice transitional effect where only your posts though do it, I'll just show you this one last time. You go into your general settings, you make sure to select under supported templates, you select the ones that you want it to be served. So you can choose to post and then singular. If you want it to show it on your homepage, you have to then check homepage and pages. If you want it on your archives, you gotta do that. And you basically just run down everything that you want it to be enabled for and disable everything else. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below about this plugin. I will try to help you out. I've used it a ton of times. I've messed around with it a bunch of times. This would be my preferred plugin if it just wasn't so much of a hassle for the average website to get a somewhat appropriate looking AMP website. And the good thing about this plugin though, compared to AMP for WP that I'll be going over as well is it still feels like it's your website. It's still going to look like your branding. It's still gonna have your content. It's still gonna look basically like yours does. The downside of course though is it's not going to be easy to integrate. And most of you probably, if you're watching these videos, do not have a full-time dev who can integrate it or you just are trying to do it yourself. Uh, so next video will be AMP for WP and that's where you'll be able to get a nicer looking and easier to integrate plugin. If you have any questions, as always, you can ask in the comments below. Otherwise, make sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.